So today we're gonna talk about two markets here in Southwest Florida or two cities specifically, Cape Coral and Lehigh Acres. First, let's start with Cape Coral. Let's look at the stats and then we're gonna talk about Lehigh Acres and then we're gonna break down some feedback for both, right? So first, the median sales price in Cape Coral is 399,450. The closed sales in Cape Coral is 460. Median days on market in Cape Coral is 36 days on market, which is really good. List price received in Cape Coral is 97.5%. And just really quick side note on 97.5%, that's generally what it is in all different types of markets, 97.5%, because they don't factor in the price reductions that happen when they first list the property to when they actually sold the property. They go look at the last price reduction that they did and when the property goes under contract, that's where they're calculating that statistic. If you want more information about that, email me directly because it's kind of technical, but I, I wanna make sure you understand the numbers. The sold price per square foot in Cape Coral is $239 per square foot. The new listings that came on to Cape Coral is 707. The active inventory we have right now is 2,108. And a really quick side note on the inventory, 2,108. That number is partially inaccurate because some of the new constructions that come onto the market, what builders do is they say that this property, they, they give you an image of what property they're gonna place there, give you a price range of how much that property is gonna be, but it's not actually built. It's, it's a pre-construction sale. So that kind of skews our numbers. Anywho, the month supply of Cape Coral is 4.6 months. That means we are in a seller's market. Six to seven months is generally a balanced market. Right now, 4.6 months is a clear indication that we're in a seller's market. Now, we're gonna go shift over to Lehigh Acres. The median sales price in Lehigh is 345,000. Close sales in Lehigh is 183. Median days on market is 30 days which is really good. Now the list price received in Lehigh Acres is really interesting because it's 99%. So does that mean that the Lehigh homes get more money than the Cape Coral homes? Absolutely not. It just means that agents are pricing the properties better so they go under contract to get closer to that sales figure. Now the sold price per square foot in Lehigh Acres is $215. The new listings in Lehigh is 291. The active inventory in Lehigh Acres is 748 month supply is 4.1. So what's happening in our market? There are three parts of this market that I like to chat with you about. Number one are the buyers, number two are sellers, and number three are investors who are purchasing or looking to sell here in Southwest Florida. So we're gonna get out of my office. I gotta jump on the road. I'm just gonna kinda walk you through and just bomb you with some information about the different types of scenarios that are happening for buyers, sellers, and investors here in Southwest Florida to actually give you insight to what is true and what is happening here backed by data, right? If you are a buyer coming into Southwest Florida, construction times are still a year to two years before a house is built. That's a fact, that, that has not changed. The cost of construction is hovering right around the same amount. Nothing dramatic there has decreased significantly. New construction is still the only type of inventory that we're, we're having coming onto the market, um, more so than resale homes, right? So if you're a buyer, there's a lot of things that you have to take into consideration. They say Florida is expensive and you know, insurance is hard to get insurance and the taxes are high. It's no longer affordable and whatnot, right? Now, if you're local, totally agree with you. If you're from out of state or out of the country, you know, that's hit or miss, depending on where you're moving from. Like Jersey, New York, you know, you guys have an exit state tax and you, when you get taxed when you sell your property too, right? Like Ohio, Michigan, the Midwest, Wisconsin, Minnesota, you know, that's a different ball game altogether. The taxes aren't as high. They're pretty equivalent as far as the cost of living and things of that nature. So it really depends on what type of lifestyle you're wanting to accomplish. Now, I've seen on the internet and these reaction videos to the interest rates and things of this nature that if, if a real estate agent tells you to buy now, you know, they're doing you a disservice. And I want to dispel that myth. That's not true. 
everybody's life goals and real estate goals are different and what's happening personally and professionally in your life and the truth is is if you have one home and you got a job transfer and you're relocating to a second home uh, or relocating to Florida for example to start a new job or retire down here or whatever the case is you know that that that's very situational right now if you're a first-time home buyer that's looking to purchase in this market you know we definitely want to make sure that you do things the smart way so for example if you know you're making a certain income how much house you can afford all these types of questions that come up you know that's a real you have to take a serious look at that because that's going to overall impact your quality of living here in southwest florida especially in cape coral lee county area cape coral lee high acres fort myers bonita estero sanibel captiva i could go on and on with the different cities but there's a lot of things to take into consideration if you're a first time home buyer. Again, property taxes, insurances, if you're gonna go in a gated community with HOAs, proximity to schools, proximity to work, interest rates, all types of different economics that you have to take into consideration. It's pretty tough. I mean, new construction is generally the best way to go right now because you know if you buy a resale home that roof better be newer or um younger than 10 years because if not it's going to be difficult to get insurance and if you do get insurance it's going to be expensive and that's the thing people say that you can't get insurance i'm here to tell you that's not true you can absolutely get insurance it's just going to be more expensive so when we're dialing in all the costs for a first-time home buyer we have to look at their monthly budget and see what's available in the area for that budget and what you're comfortable spending on your mortgage or whatnot. That seven and a half percent interest rate is no joke and it certainly adds to your payment. The other part of it is that you could always purchase a home, struggle a bit, and then refinance later to drop your insurance. Some people agree with that, some people disagree with that. My thing is you can't play the game if you're not in it. If you're looking to build equity in your home, for a long period of time and you're not planning on selling for like 10 years plus or five to 10 years plus, you're gonna be in good shape. The interest rates will go up, they'll come down. We don't know yet what's happening, right? So you really gotta balance all these different factors into like what you're trying to accomplish. And I think that's the most critical part of going through this process of purchasing a home as a first time home buyer. If, if you're a buyer that's looking to pick up a second home or something like that, you know, that's a different story altogether. It, most likely you have a little bit more equity, you, you wanna buy cash or a conventional loan, put a heavy sum down, things of that nature, where interest rates really don't affect you, right? So most of the buyers that I see in that price range are like 500,000 and up. First time home buyers are somewhere between 300 and 500,000. So there's a lot of different things that you have to take into consideration when going through the purchasing process. Now, if you're a seller, in Cape Coral and you're saying I'm gonna wait till the market gets better or I want more money for my home which is so common right now I see a ton of sellers trying to sell their properties uh, at the pre look, today is September 29th 2023 they're trying to get June 2022 and before prices we're just not in that market we're not seeing fifty thousand dollars over ask $25,000 over ass or anything like that unless you're using a different strategy to sell the home which we could get into if you're thinking about selling your home so it, with a seller having a resale home and you're trying to sell it waiting for more money that ship has sailed right now we're not in that market at this moment now could things change in the future absolutely do we have a crystal ball absolutely not so you got to really ask yourself you know what's your goal for selling a home why are you selling what's important to you about selling selling this home what will that accomplish for you now the other part that you have to take into consideration when selling a home here right now is that you're still in the plus side of the equity and what i mean by that is for example a 2005 home built uh, about 1543 square feet pre-covid so the year of 2019, December 2019 and before. You could have got a home on septic and well on a dry lot, meaning no water, canals, or anything like that, for $155,000. At today's price, you could pick up that same home 
for like three hundred and fifty thousand dollars between three thirty and three fifty, right? So during COVID, we had a thirty eight percent increase on the value of people's property. So the equity of those homes now are about fifteen to twenty percent less, which means you're still between what is it? Uh, 17 to 20 percent in equity in the home so you still had like you're you weren't your value of your property wasn't going as low as it was or it wasn't climbing as high before from the recession the great recession from 2008 up to like 2018 2019 property values have just like slowly incrementally increased now not at all the equity it, that you still have equity that you're playing with from covid now, once that equity, is, if the equity continues to go down to pre-COVID numbers, you know, that's where you're gonna hurt the most. But if you sell now, you're selling at a profit. And, and, and I'm, I'm speaking in terms of equity in the home from pre-COVID that has grown to 38% and now it's dipped down to about 20% equity from that time when COVID happened. So. It's still a seller's market. Believe it or not, it is 100% a seller's market in Southwest Florida, Cape Coral, Lehigh Acres and whatnot, right? So if you're a seller selling or wanting to sell and you're trying to time the market, how many times have you been successful? I, I would dare to ask this question. How many times have you been successful timing the market and making a ton of money versus just pure luck, right? And I'm just having an honest conversation with you right now. Now, for my investors that are out there, new construction, that's where it's at. I've seen a ton of investors flock to Southwest Florida and the different cities here building and reselling. You could generally expect a 15 to 20% return after you completed building the house. That's the land, the development side of it that includes um, the building costs and everything else we're generally seeing between 15 to 20 percent return depending on where you're building and the type of market and demographic that you're going for so southwest florida is still like cape coral lehigh fort myers benita estero lee county as a whole is performing really well uh, rentals right now are still up because we have such a shortage of inventory the only inventory you're getting over here is new construction so that being said it, it's definitely investors are in a unique scenario where investing in Lee County you're gonna make a return now you would think that permitting times and construction materials and labor all that's settled down since COVID that is untrue labor's tough um, some materials have come down in pricing where they're not as high as it was before so there is some savings there and while we're talking about this we're gonna talk about the escalation clause so not for inv this is not investors this is going back to buyers who are looking to purchase a new construction home for themselves and live in as retirement or um, just settling into Southwest Florida right so they still have these escalation clauses here. And the challenge that I have with the escalation clause is that I've seen so many people, so many clients and buyers get, for lack of better, for a lack of a better term, screwed over by some of these builders that have these escalation clauses. So what's, what's the whole purpose of a contract? Off, offer acceptance consideration right so they're offering to build a home you accepted their offer right with the caveat of a escalation clause and then the consideration like what you're gonna pay for the property or whatnot right so the issue that I have here is that the some of these builders that are not investor builders investor builders are the one that build for investors at a set price and to make a profit not those guys those guys have it locked down and you know they want to make sure that their investors are happy I'm talking about the bigger builders general builders that are out there I don't want to name names or anything like that so but I just want you to be aware that 
with these type of builders, what they're doing is putting in that escalation clause. So there's zero incentive for them to speed up the build. There's zero incentive for them to secure materials at a better price. There's zero incentive for them to order the materials in a timely manner. So that way, you know, you don't get caught by the rising cost when it does come time for that material to be purchased, windows, doors, a seawall, things of that nature. Because what ends up happening? They have zero incentive to do what they're going to do because they're always going to point to that escalation clause that's something that says something to the effect of, you know, any overages or expenses that the buyer is responsible for. And I just want to make sure that everybody understands this that's building new construction. The builder is not going to lose money. They're not. One or two things will happen if you and the builder come to a disagreement. Builders will lean or foreclose on your property if you don't agree with them. Even if you want to switch contractors or whatnot, you're still going to have to pay them off. And then the next builder that you come to finish a project, most of them don't want to finish another builder's project because it's such a big headache, right? So there's so many different aspects to new construction that you need to understand as someone who's looking to build a new home for themselves. Here is a prime example. This That house has been building forever same thing with this house too I go this way every day to drop my son off and my daughter to school now look at that like there is zero incent these things have been these two these three builds that are on this road have been um, going on for at least two years plus we're coming up to this house here on the corner this one actually uh, took place this year and look how far they come along the other ones were like two years which was insane if you're watching this right now and you, you've already built or something like that i want your feedback in the comment section below of your thoughts of this market and what you've seen and how it's going for you so far if this video has been useful to you as a way of saying thank you i'd love for you to hit that like button which helps my channel being found by youtube's algorithm thanks for watching hopefully you found some value in this video if you're thinking or even considering relocating to Southwest Florida, be sure to call, text, or email me. My information is in the description box below. I'd love the opportunity to connect with you. And if you want to know more about working, living, or playing here in Southwest Florida, then if you haven't already, be sure to smash that subscribe button and click that bell notification so you're kept up to date with the latest content. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Wow, look at this boat. It's a CV things awesome looking it's been so rainy here that you going boating has been tough you like you have to hit certain hours and after you get all the preparation done for the boat and fill up or whatnot it just becomes super difficult